my super suit. What? Where is my super suit? In 2008, Marvel completely changed the superhero movie scene with the release of Iron Man. This began the massive rise of the MCU, generating Disney and Mickey billions upon billions of dollars, possibly making it the greatest superhero movie ever. And then Endgame came out and other movies suck. But before Iron Man, who was there? Look, up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's... The Incredibles is the greatest superhero movie ever. And, and if, if you, you disagree, disagree, I respect your opinion. Say! Today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be going over my favorite superhero movie ever. And by the end of this video, I can guarantee, no, I can promise this will also be your favorite superhero movie ever. Or maybe at least top five. But before I get into that, thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Now, some of y'all may not know this, but I go to the gym. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can bench about two, two pounds. And when I'm at the gym and I want to listen to the incredible soundtrack, what better product to use than my Raycons? Ah, uh, yes, my Raycons. Not only are they half the price of other premium brands, come in a multitude of colors, but that 32 hour battery life does sure come in handy. That would mean I could travel to Detroit three times and still have some battery left over. But come on, who wants to go to Detroit? Am I right, fellas? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh with some amazing sound quality, three customizable sound profiles, noise isolation, awareness mode. What are you doing? Not only will you be supporting me and helping me feed my goldfish, but you will be experiencing your music, your podcast, your FaceTime calls, your YouTube videos at a whole new level. So go buy it. Click the link in my description or go to buyraycon.com slash DerekFTB for 20% off your order and free shipping. And again, thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Now back to it. We open back in the 1940s, the golden days, the good old days, where we see a young Mr. Incredible in his cool blue suit, Elastigirl, I already know how y'all gonna get in these comments, and the GOAT, Frozone, voiced by Samuel L. Jackson, and one of the only black superheroes that doesn't have electricity powers. It's kind of crazy how many there are. After the interviews, we cut to Mr. Incredible cruising around the city in his tux looking real clean looking real nice and that's another reason i love this movie as a kid i don't know if it was the music it was probably the music but this movie felt like a spy movie and a superhero movie at the same time it's like 007 and the fantastic four had a baby we see mr incredible save a cat from a tree and stop a police chase at the same time which is <laughs> incredible and when he gets back in the car we meet buddy and when i tell y'all this kid suffers from that paradoxical parasocial relationship thing i mean it. he's like a taylor swift fan or, or a bts fan oh he'll be crazy he's rocking the merch he's obsessive somehow broke into the man's car he's the real deal this man is a tier three sub he tries to convince mr incredible to let him be his sidekick which he declines by ejecting him out of his car damn bro a no would have sufficed mr incredible after driving off links up with elastic girl Chill in the comments, y'all. Chill, chill. And after rising a little, he saved the dude who was trying to commit suicide. And coincidentally, the window that he broke through was on the same floor as a saboteur himself. Bomb voyage. You know, it's funny to think, since this is the 1940s, the villains probably talk like, Meh, if it isn't my arch nemesis, Mr. Incredible. Meh. Oh, and the colored one. Who invited him? And while they're about to do their hero and villain speeches, Buddy, aka Incrediboy, comes in flying with his rocket boots. Which, for as annoying as he is, that's pretty impressive. Rocket boots in the 1940s? Him and Mr. Incredible go back and forth about him wanting to be a sidekick and Mr. Incredible saying no. Even Bomboyard tells him he's not cut for it, which gotta hurt coming from a French dude. Not gonna lie though, Buddy was spitting some facts here. People without powers can be heroes too. Look at Batman and Iron Man. They both ended up doing great things as regular, regular humans. Gr great. Granted, they both did end up dead. Mr. Incredible disagrees again, but Buddy persists. And as he's running out to get the cops for a situation that is clearly already under control, Bomb Voyage sticks a bomb onto his cape. Mr. Incredible jumps onto Buddy to get the bomb off him. The bomb falls and lands on the train tracks, blowing it up, forcing Mr. Incredible to stop a whole train with his bare hands. Such a cool scene. And before anyone says it, no, they did not copy Spider-Man 2. While that movie is also peak, these movies came out the same year, only a few months apart. So even if they did copy them the artist at pixar would have had to draw and animate all this stuff in that little amount of time doing that would pretty much require slave hours only mappa animators and warehouse employees can handle something like that after saving the train from crashing mr incredible tells the popo to tell buddy's parents about what he's done and when they ask him about bon voyage mm -hmm. We see Mr. Incredible get married to Elastigirl, and things should only be up from here. I mean, they're superheroes. What could go wrong? <laughs> Mr. Incredible ended up getting sued by the guy he saved, which is 
This is why Homelander does what he does. The more messed up part is that stuff like this actually happens in real life. There's been cases where someone saves a person and that person sues the dude who saved them. That's messed up stuff. Top 10 anime betrayals. So after Mr. Incredible gets sued, a bunch of other superheroes also get sued. And that led the government to banning all soups from continuing their hero work, forced to go into hiding. Every single one of them, no pushback at all from the genetically superior beings. Uh, okay, I'll believe it. We jump to 15 years in the future, 1962, where we see our boy Bob is working in an insurance company. And he's put on a few pounds. Okay, my son trying to get that queso physique. We see he's not very happy being a normie who can't use his powers. Yeah, must suck. We also see Elastigirl and baby Jack-Jack. They're called interrupted by Bob's boss. And every time I see him, I, I can't help but laugh. He really looks like a monkey with no hair. He's pretty much mad because Bob is being a good person. And he, he definitely has some form of short man syndrome. Afterwards, we meet the rest of Elastigirl and Mr. Incredible's kids. We meet Dash, who if you couldn't tell by his name, he could run really fast. But he's not allowed to use his powers because it's unethical whatever that means. We also meet Violet. She can go invisible, which is a stupid power, at least for me, because I already am invisible. They're all eating dinner and talking about their days when a huge argument breaks out. Dash is running fast. Violet's throwing up force fields. Jack Jack is laughing. It was all crazy. And while that was happening, Bob reads on the newspaper that a superhero has gone missing. Hmm, very suspicious indeed. I'm twiddling my mustache right now. Bob intervenes and they get a knock on their door and hey, it's the homie Frozone. He's picking up Bob to go bowling, which was a lie. It's really cold for just sneaking around doing hero work at night. They end up saving people from a huge fire, which makes me think, why didn't the government just allow heroes to be heroes in other ways, like firefighters or doctors or, or DoorDash drivers? You know, things that are essential to society. I'm pretty sure it would have been better than working in a cubicle all day. They accidentally break into a jewelry store where the alarm goes off and a cop comes in to arrest them. And this is one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. I used to try to recreate it all the time when I was young. So the cop comes in, he tells both of them to freeze and Frozen looks over to his left and starts reaching for a cup of water. The cop again tells both of them to freeze. Frozone tells the cop, I'm just thirsty and takes a sip of the water. The cop again is about to say, just put your hands up and I know, I know, freeze. Oh, that scene was so tough. They end up getting away, adrenaline pumping. But as they drive off, we see a mysterious white haired lady on the phone stalking them. Things about to get serious. Bob gets home, stuffs his face with some chocolate cake, has a pretty big fight with his wife because he misses the good old days, and he's low-key having a midlife crisis. They scream, they yell, they make up. Then we cut back to Bob's job, or I should say ex-job, because he just lost it because he nearly killed his boss. How many walls is that? One, two, three, four? Our boy Bobby is down bad. He has hit rock bottom. But luckily for him, things are about to change. He opens a package on his desk that has an iPad in it that proceeds to scan him and his entire room. And once it's done doing that, we see no other than the white hair lady. Her name is Mirage and she has a mission for our boy Bobby to destroy this super big robot in exchange for some moolah, some money, and most importantly, Bob feeling young again. So you know he's accepting. And that's another reason this movie feels like a spy movie to me because he does all this stuff behind his wife's back, which doesn't sound so cool when I say it out loud. Disclaimer, cheating on your wife of 18 years does not I repeat, does not make you a spy. The mess self destructs. He suits up in his super cool blue suit, which doesn't fit him too well anymore, and hops on a jet with Mirage. She briefs him on a mission, which is to destroy, you know, the, the huge Fushigi ball of arms. He lands on the beach and immediately begins to fight. So the whole deal with this thing is that it pretty much adapts fast to the person it's fighting, just like my boy Maharaga. So at first, my boy Bob was getting tossed. Eventually, they end up fighting on the ground next to some lava. The robot adjusts Bob's back, and Bob makes the robot impale itself by chilling inside of it, in turn defeating it. You see, me, I, I would have tapped it once and it would have been defeated, but that's just me though. Once the fight is over, we see a mysterious man who was watching the fight tell Mirage he's very impressed and to have dinner with Bob. Hmm suspicious. Mr. Incredible and Mirage meet again in this lava room and they arrange for Mr. Incredible to come back to the island. Then we get a nice little montage of Mr. Incredible being happy, being a good dad, coming with a new whip, losing weight, life's incredible again. And since he lost weight and tore up his suit, Bobby gotta get a new suit, RIP the blue one. And he goes to no other than Edna Mode, easily top three favorite characters in this entire movie. She's hilarious. She makes Bob a new suit and insists on not using capes. No capes. Cause apparently a bunch of suits back in the day died because of having one. This is a Pixar movie, by the way, and they showed this one getting sucked into a literal turbine. Back at home, Helen finds a strain of Mirage's hair on Bob's suit, and she overhears Bob on the phone setting up another mission. But when she picks up the phone to properly listen in, all she hears is a woman asking Bob how soon can you be here, and Bob saying he'll be there tomorrow morning. So, 
pretty much what sounds like a booty call. And then asked Bob who that was, and he says it was work, and she knows he's lying. That gotta hurt. She tells him to have a great trip, and that she loves him to, I guess, see if he has any remorse for cheating. Bro, if you think he's cheating, just accuse him and get on with it. He says goodbye to Helen, goes back to the island, and while he's waiting to receive another assignment, out of nowhere, another one of these robots appears, and this one, this one is tough. This one gives our boy Bobby a run for his money, to the point where he ends up borderline losing, until out of nowhere, we see no other than Buddy. But now, his name is Syndrome, he's evil, and it's all Mr. Incredible's fault. Not really though, kind of. After those multiple rejections, Buddy gave up on idolizing Mr. Incredible and decided to become his arch nemesis, a villain instead. And one of my absolute favorites, Syndrome got it all, the evil monologues, the crazy technology. That, that chin did not get any smaller though, I will say. I'll get into more about him in a segundo, but for now, Mr. Incredible tries to fight back, but Syndrome stops himself mid monologue and uses his laser freezing thing to stop him. He accidentally throws him away and sends a bomb and a tracker to make sure he's dead. Luckily though, Bobby swims into a cave just in the nick of time, and when he gets in there, he finds the skeleton of the man who was seen missing earlier on the newspaper. R.I.P. And on the wall, it says Kronos or or, cor or Cornrows. Syndrome's tracker comes into the cave looking for Mr. Incredible, but he hides behind the skeleton of the dude, and that leads to Syndrome believing he is no more. We cut back to Helen and Edna who linked up because Helen had no idea where Bobber could be. Helen calls Bob's job to see what hotel he's staying in for his business trip, but she's told that he was fired at least two months ago. Edna asks Helen if she wants to know where Bob really is. At the same time, we cut back to Bobby who just snuck into Syndrome's lair and where he finds out Syndrome's been inviting supers to his island and terminating them one by one in order to improve his robot. And it doesn't end there, it gets worse. He's planning on sending that said robot over to the city, which I, I don't know the name of, and letting it wreak havoc, destroy the city. Why? Well, we don't know yet, you'll see. Bob begins to leave the lair to put a stop to Syndrome, but while he's leaving, the eye on his suit begins to light up and start ringing. It's Helen pinging his location. This ping leads to Mr. Incredible getting hit by a bunch of boba tea balls and getting captured. And Helen doesn't even know she accidentally caused this. Edna psychs up Helen, reminding her who she is and to stop being a little bitch. So Helen prepares for her trip to save Bob or to just be his ass for cheating. She hits up a friend to get her a private jet. Why is bro smiling like that? Is that Momo? The kids try to come with her. She tells them nine. And while she's piloting the plane, she's not getting any response from the island. She starts getting very suspicious. So she suits up, chill, chill in the comments, y'all chill, and finds out the kids snuck on board. That's not a good thing. We cut back to Mr. Incredible who's being tortured and at the same time praised, at the same time mocked by Syndrome. This dude got issues. And Syndrome starts pressing Bob, asking him who he called for backup. Bobby Lee Porter says, nobody gets shocked. Syndrome plays the audio of Helen and Bobatron is shocked, no pun intended, to hear it's his wife's voice. And Syndrome being the devious, conniving man that he is, decides to send over some gifts to the jet his family's on. Come back to the jet while Helen is on the phone with the babysitter who's taking care of Jack-Jack. She sees on the radar Syndrome's presence, two missiles. We get the sequence of Helen bobbing and weaving the missiles. Helen starts yelling over the radio that there are kids on board, but Syndrome does not care. The missiles hit the plane and in Bobby's eyes, he just lost his family, which is not true. Helen saved the kids by becoming a parachute and they're currently on the way to the island. But Mr. Incredible doesn't know that. He's like a bull when it sees red or cats when they see people being happy. He's He's mad. He attempts to grab Syndrome to crush him, but Mirage gets in the way and saves him. Mr. Incredible then threatens to crush her, and Syndrome's like, go on then, do it. What do I care? Pepsi bottle? Coca-Cola glass? I don't give a damn. Bobby obviously doesn't do it because he's a good guy. Syndrome talks a little more trash to him and leaves, and at the same time, we see Mirage sort of feels bad for our boy Bobber. Come back to Helen and the kids, they made it on the island. Wouldn't it be funny if they were just on the wrong island, they're actually like on North Sentinel or something? They head into a cave, and this is where Helen gives the kids a talk. And it's pretty serious, so listen up. It's about how these villains aren't your regular action movie goons. The ones that go, meh. These dudes will kill you. Whether you're a grandma, a middle-aged man, a kid, they don't care. Which is actually one of my favorite scenes. I like how real she's being with them. She tells them they can use their powers, tells Violet to be confident, and then she skedaddles. Come back to Syndrome and Mirage, and she's not so happy that he was willing to let her get crushed to prove a point. Syndrome tries to pull the, babe, chill. I was just jostling around. You know I love you, right? But she wasn't having it. She gets up and she leaves. Tensions are rising. Cut back to Elastigirl snooping around and that's where we see, hey, hey, get your head out of your pants, mister. Funny part about this scene is Elastigirl was actually not so happy that she looks this way. This was in the 60s and people only like girls that look like this. Drastic difference from the BBL society we live in today. We see her beat up some guards and find out which room Bob is being kept in. We cut back to Dash and Violin who are still chilling in the cave, well at least momentarily, cause they have to immediately rush out cause the flames from the rocket launch just came through. Yes ladies and gentlemen, the rocket has been launched. Time is ticking for our heroes. The kids end up sleeping and 
Dash Boone's Violet. The kids get spotted by the same real bird that spotted Bob earlier. And this leads to the kids having to finally use their powers. Dash learns he can run on water. Violet learns to control her force fields. It's nice. It's sweet. The kids finally see their potential. And while this was happening, Mirage, who we saw quit earlier, decides to free Bob. They embrace after Bob damn near murked her. And at the same time, Helen walks in to what looks like the end of that booty call. You must be Mr. Sinclair. Bob and Helen meet up with the kids, do some cool family combos, beat up some guards, and then Syndrome shows up. Well, this stinks. Now that Syndrome has the whole fam captured, this is where he finally fully explains his plan. So once the robot arrives, wreaking havoc on the city, like I explained earlier, Syndrome will pull up using his robot controls to make it seem like he's defeating. Eventually, he will defeat it, and everyone will see him as a superhero. He'll ride the wave out until eventually he doesn't want to anymore. Then he sells all his inventions, making everyone technically super. And when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. Could not tell me this man's syndrome isn't cold. That line was cold. We see the robot land and starts wrecking stuff in the city. And while Bobby starts apologizing, telling his family he's so sorry he got them in this situation and he's been such a terrible dad. And Violet breaks free using her force fields and frees the rest of her family away. And with some help from Mirage, they get access to a rocket. They're finally on the way to save the city. But while that's happening, we cut to hey, it's the homie Frozone. He sees the robot going crazy and stuff, so he wants to help. But when he opens the suit compartment, it's gone, honey. Where is my super suit? Where is my super suit? Comedy gold. Love this man. While we wait for Frozone, we see Syndrome pretending to be a hero. You know, saving people, boasting, all that stuff. When the robot starts to do what it does best, it starts to adapt. And it begins to identify that, hey, the only reason this troll doll is beating me is because of that remote. So what if I... <laughs> With Syndrome down, there's only one person who can save the city. Or one people, I should say. The Incredibles. After hitting the meanest parallel park, they team up with Frozone to take down the robot. Unfortunately, it wasn't going so well until they found Syndrome's remote. With the remote in hand, they used one of its broken arms to propel it into the robot, defeating it the same way Bob did before. The day is saved. All is well with the Incredibles. Or so they thought. While on the limo ride home, Helen starts listening to voicemails left by the babysitter that was taking care of Jack-Jack. And they increasingly became more and more chaotic until eventually the babysitter thanks them for sending in a new babysitter. They never called her a new sitter. It's Syndrome taking Jack-Jack hostage. Syndrome starts to fly off and sadly, none of the Incredibles can fly. I was thinking maybe Bob could just super jump, but I guess not. While Syndrome is getting away with him, we see Jack-Jack use his powers for the very first time. He starts shapeshifting from fire to iron to hell spawn. Bob launches Helen into the air. She catches Jack-Jack. Then Bob proceeds to throw his freaking 1962 brand new Volvo at Syndrome's jet, which leads to Syndrome getting freaking sucked in by a jet turbine. Oh my. The movie finishes with Dash coming in second place in his race, a new villain appearing. Yo, what are these Gotham levels of crime? What city does it take place in? Okay, that checks out. And the Incredibles suit up to prepare for the next fight. Even Jack-Jack suited up. What is bro about to do? Ladies and gentlemen, that was the greatest superhero movie ever. I hope you guys can see where I come from now. And if you don't, it's cool, it's fine. Just know, I'll, I'll hate you forever. This movie teaches you that family comes first. And if you're special, don't be. Cause you'll outshine everybody, you self-centered fuck. Comment down below your favorite Incredibles character. Any more movies you want me to go over. I'm gonna start doing this more often. And like I normally say, moral of the story, Honey, I found my super suit. <laughs>